人。I just had to remind you I got that specialist appointment Tuesday. Dad said he'd watch Molly. I'll drive you. You sure? You got the case. I'll drive you. We feel so special, don't we? Getting Daddy for lunch. <laughs> Daddy! <laughs> Still sad about that little shake. We got the bottom. Next, we need to make the body. I need you to find me some sticks for Close. the arm. Firstly, adorable, like getting to see Molly and her mum together. It's just, I'm just so happy to see that. Second, not to go off on too much of a tangent, but I think that's like, that is something I can identify as like being one of the most incredible parts of being like a crime investigator, like a detective or police or whatever, is that it's that piecing together of what happened when you've just got these clues and you've got to try and deduce from, you know, times of death and the way blood's pulled and, you know, what weapons or stuff is on the scene, you know, what's how the sequence of events unfolded. Like I love watching documentaries and, and listening to detectives go through how they do that with the help of forensics and ballistics and, and everything else. And I was really enjoying Lou, you know, there looking, noticing the bug spray and, you know, he's now got to try and, fa is that a factor? Is this something that was just left on the table? Why would it be? You know, you're not going to have that around food. It's so cool. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, little Molly is adorable. Uh-oh, what's she gonna find? Mama! Yeah? Look what I found. No, hon, that's got a rip. That's trash now. Okay. Uh-oh. What did they find? Clue! Fingerprints. Yeah, I know. Jeez, I can't find the barrel. What's that? The whole mama's doing daddy's job again. Hmm? Go, mama! <laughs> oh. oh, no. You okay, hon? Yeah, I stood up too fast as all. Anxious right this minute. Okay, uh, let me see some IDs. I'm gonna reach in my pocket. I can barely breathe. Okay. I got your names and your plate number. I'm gonna radio ahead and make sure you make it out of state. Wow. If not. I'm going to put out a APB and have you boys round it up, and then we'll talk again. You understand? I do. Oh, shit. And isn't that a minor miracle? The state of the world today, the level of conflict and misunderstanding that two men could stand on a lonely road in winter and talk calmly and rationally. While all around them, people were losing their mind. 
shit, he's the darkness, isn't he? It's alright, Hank, it scared the shit out of me as well. He's not going to put him in the meat freezer at work. Tell me he is not going to put him in the meat freezer at work. Totally making she is totally moving in on that wife. Absolutely. Is he gonna like stick him through the meat grinder? Oh yes. I don't need to see this woman pee. So she went to Costco. She like yeah. toilet paper. She needs the toilet paper. Got it. Never heard it called TP before. You're kind of a bad girl, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, you are. I'm usually able to tell right away, but you had me fooled. Oh, it's nothing. I just bumped it, is all. In the dust up. Thought you weren't in the car, you said. <laughs> it's okay. You don't have to tell the truth. I'm not even mad about the TP. Next time, just ask, though. Or maybe that's what you like. Huh? Breaking the rules? Thanks for the ride, okay? I just, I, I got a real bad headache, like I said before, and uh, maybe I'll, I'll just see you at work tomorrow, okay? Sleep well now. Is she gay too? She's picked a very doughy husband and is apparently not really sleeping with him very much, but that's, you know. I'm giving this a look for a minute, you look like us for a minute. Anything interesting on the car I called in? Ah, uh, that's what, okay, okay. Those fellows were positively fascinating. Nothing actionable, though. Want to talk about it? Not especially. Come on. So I'm on the wheel. This kid comes out, because what could he have been? 19. Lights his shit stick, and then... Never even saw it coming. Shit. Shot him right through the cigar. A one in a million shot. And the look on his face when he fell. Just like the cook. Mm. Yeah. Bafflement. After WW2, we went six years without a without a murder here. Six years. Now these days, well... Sometimes wonder if you boys didn't bring that war home with you. Pauls, I think... I'm, I'm sure I've seen before about the idea that um, part of the reason for the serial killer spike at that point in time was you had people being raised by traumatised veterans from the... Second World War, and then also the impact of those who came back from Vietnam, kind of disillusioned and very damaged. It's quite interesting, like the, with the wider effects on society that we don't necessarily think about immediately when we're talking about having a war. And I think all of us can agree if you're going to go to war, you really need to mean it. But there needs to be a really, really good reason. And, you know, most people agree that, you know, that justification was there. In World War Two, and sadly, perhaps not many wars since. Play. He's butchering him. Fuck me. 
fucking bright tartar. No. No, keep driving. Keep driving, mate. Oh my god. I really think she's going to set him up for this. She's got the bruise. She's saying that she was at home and Eddie had the car crash. He's going down for this. That's disgusting. Finger, there's a rogue finger, is what I'm saying. Saw your light on. You know Molly loves bacon for breakfast. I seem to remember we're out. So I thought, if you don't mind, pick some up. Be there when she woke up. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh. Shit. Uh, no, it's all right. Better call Saul. Oh. So no, I, 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 I got it. I, I got it. You gonna get that? Yeah. Where's the pagan so long? Yeah, it's just, uh... I'm almost done. Well, can you hurry up? I don't like being here by myself. Thanks. No one would have believed in the last years of the 19th century that human affairs were being watched from the timeless worlds of space. No one could have dreamed we were being scrutinized as someone with a microscope studies creatures that swarm and multiply in a drop of water. Few men even considered the possibility of life on other planets. And yet, this world the world. across the Gulf of... Yeah, it's one of the worlds. I like that. It wasn't quite as fast paced as the first one, but actually it was way more suspenseful. This felt like a, a hold your breath almost the entire time episode as our character groups started to interact with each other and things move forward a little bit. So we've got the Kansas City mob that we'll call them for now. The Kansas City mob is in town. They've made the offer to the Gerhards, that offer is probably going to be turned down, at least it's going to be, to be honest, I don't know what's going on right there, because I, the mum didn't seem like she was dead against the deal, the son seemed quite against it, but would he change his mind, it's difficult to know how that's going to pan out, I can't tell whether... The mother is going to attempt to make the deal and then the son is going to kick off and kill everybody or if what it looks like they're doing already is they've clearly gone off to try and pick off Rye. That's what took them to the blowhard in the uh, typewriter shop. So they might be trying to pick off the most vulnerable of the sons to attempt to sort of subvert any influence of the mother but bear is on his mum's side whatever happens which means the only other option for them is is going to be dodd but i don't think dodd's going to work for anybody at this point but we'll see 
but anyway as so the kansas city guys after they've made the offer they go off they see typewriter man and then they pass the waffle hut and at the waffle hut we've got lou solverson molly and betsy and they see them after they found the gun and put in a call to hank who then stops them on the road to get the red d so they are now on the police's radar so i don't you know they're not going to be able to get away with much i don't think it's very there i mean it's only episode two as well it's just like how is that going to escalate But in that, that showdown between the black Kansas City mobster and Hank, it had complete echoes of when Lorne Malvo was giving Gus the riddle in season one about like the human eye can like, identify more shades of green than any colour. And it was, you know, why? And it was like, when you phone the riddle, you'll find the answer of why I am the way I am. That was quite interesting. And just the look on Hank's face, like he understood that he was dealing with someone that was incredibly dangerous. And I, I saw fear in his eyes. And he doesn't seem like the kind of guy to scare terribly easy. So, yeah. I'm unnerved by the twins and, and Black Mobster Man. But we'll see how that develops. Then obviously we've got the whole... We didn't spend much time with the Gerhards, but you know, they were like cutting off guys' ears and torturing him in the shed and they're gearing up for a family war, clearly. Dodie's like, we're going to war, Bear's picked the wrong side, it's on. And then of course we've got Ed and Peggy, who I now know the names of. Ed and Peggy. I'm don't trust Peggy as far as I can throw her. I I don't even know why. I just get a really dodgy vibe of her. She makes me uncomfortable. And I I think she's setting Ed up. I think he's he's gonna end up the patsy for this. I actually thought at the moment he accidentally elbowed her in the eye in the eye. Because it's kinda like that you don't you don't write these things in for nothing. They serve a purpose. And I think the purpose is creating ed later as culpable for the murder in a in a way that's you know different so he drove the car he knocked him over he then killed him chopped up his body and got rid of it and she didn't say anything because you know he was beaten around and he's this monster at home her boss definitely in my humble opinion has the hots for her i don't i don't think that i think that was basically confirmed this episode the way she moved in on her was unambiguous as far as i'm concerned she's i mean she's creepy she's her boss like you can't i think i'm assuming she's her boss you can't go crushing on a on a on a member of staff like that and having them feel like uncomfortable you know wh whether they'll return your affections or not it's just like it's just not appropriate so i don't know quite what the future of that relationship is but obviously we have seen that peggy's heart isn't in the marriage and i wonder if maybe you know that would be interesting if she actually was gay to, uh, to see where that goes and would she end up going off to California with that woman and leaving Ed to take the rap for everything else we shall see we shall see but I'm really really enjoying this season so far I think it's fantastic drama there's like the number of times I've hung my breath oh my god I can't believe I didn't I nearly rang off without talking about the big scene at the end which is Lou walking into the butcher I knew that rogue finger was gonna make an appearance bloody hell I honestly think I stopped breathing for like a good chunk of seconds while the drama with that was unfolding just thinking 
Like he's gonna, he's gonna bring a thousand percent. But he, I mean, why would he? Lou's got no reason to be suspicious. But he did pick up on Ed being weird. So I think if anything ends up pointing back to Ed, Lou is now gonna have seen him that night. Remember that he's nervous and shifty. He was in the butchers after hours. And then, you know, if you investigate, you're going to say to the guy who owns the butchers, he was there. He's like, I don't understand why he was there overnight. He'd not, he called in sick that day. So there's like a whole world of shit, I think, about to come down on poor Ed. I really have a terrible feeling that he's going to be taking the rap for things that he didn't really, he's not really responsible for. Like, okay, he killed Roy Gerhard, but he killed him in the process of being attacked with a knife. It's very different than knocking him down in the middle of the road, driving him home and attempt, you know, maybe waiting for him to die in the garage. You know, one is an act of self-defence, the other is not. So, oh my God, I just have this feeling of foreboding. I'm really worried about Hank really worried i thought he was going to get shot by those guys immediately in that interaction so i don't know where where his story is going to go i don't know who's going to make it or not and that makes me quite nervous but really fantastic opening to episodes and i'm looking forward very much to episode three and until the next time bye bye